Sometimes people will ask, what is the difference between an expansion and an incarnation? And so you can understand the difference by what is the difference between Lord Nityananda and Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya is the incarnation and Lord Nityananda is the expansion of the world. In this way, we try to explain the difference between incarnation and expansion. So three Vishnu Tattvas there in Pachatattva, Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of the world. And he is coming as an Acharya. And as an Acharya we heard how he was responsible for the appearance of the Lord. And finally at the end of the Lord's pastimes he gave the signal to the Lord that now the time to go, now it's time to depart. So how significant his role is in the pastimes of the Lord. Very, very important personality. The Srila Prabhupada used to visit Shantipur, the home of Advaita Acharya. He has two homes. One is there near the yoga pit, but the other, the main home is at Shantipur. And Srila Prabhupada would regularly go there to Shantipur, even before he took sannyas, long before he ever went to America. He would go to Shantipur. And he would go and he would chant. He'd spend the whole day there chanting japa. One uh, pujari who was there, revealed to the devotees how he would he would see this man coming. At that time originally Prabhupada was in white wearing his kadi. And he saw him there the whole day chanting. And then after some time he saw him again in Saffron. And he was surprised. Oh and he saw him taking sannyas. Sri Prabhupada took sannyas and before he went to America, he again went to Shantipur to chant and to pray there, to be empowered, to go to the West, to distribute Krishna consciousness. The, the Brahmana who was doing the puja there in, in Shantipur saw how Prabhupada was there as a sannyasi, he was chanting, and at the same time he was shedding tears. He was shedding tears. So the, the Brahmana approached him and asked him, what is wrong? What's wrong, Swamiji? And Prabhupada replied to him and said, you know, I have been given the mission impossible. I have, I've been given this impossible mission, but I have to go, I have to do it, I have to try. And so the, the Brahmana was certainly surprised to hear this from 
from the plan. You didn't know what the, what the mission was or what he was going to do. But he was uh, remembering all of this and he told the devotee how later on he got a magazine, he got a back to Godhead magazine and he saw the picture and he remembered. He said, oh, this is the same man who used to come to Shantipur. He used to come and chant. Then he became sannyasi and he told me he had the mission impossible. So Srila Prabhupada was coming to Shantipur and Prabhupada was very attached to Shantipur at one point because every year, you know, every year if you go to Mayapur, we will go to Shantipur on this one day, which is on the Dwarasi, just before Gopurnima. A few days before Gopurnima, we go to Shantipur to observe the uh, appearance day of uh, Ishvara Puri. Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri, yeah, Madhavendra Puri, of course. Advaita Acharya is a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. He got initiation from Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri had come there to Shantipur and Advaita Acharya took, took initiation from him, accepted him as the spiritual master. So every year Advaita Acharya used to put on a festival in honor of his Guru Maharaj. I think it, it, Disappearance, yeah, it's on the disappearance day of this Guru Maharaj. And uh, the, the, the family who are living there in Shantipur today, they're descendants of Advaita Acharya. And so they had come to Mayapur and they requested the Mayapur management under Srila Jatapaka Swami Maharaj and that, that can you help us? Because we don't have the means, we don't have any funds. Can you help us to do something? We want to begin again this festival. And apparently it's described in, I think, Chaitanya Bhagwa, how Advaita Acharya would put on this festival in honor of his Guru Maharaj. And there would be a big warehouse of leaf plates and just huge quantities of rice and dal and different things that we should have, you know, in Bengal. Bananas, of course. And <laughs> and whatever vegetables, sack, and things. And then we cook it, kichari, just as we do today. So if you go to Mayapur on the disappearance day of Madhavendra Puri, we all go to, there's many buses, and it's free as well. The devotees sponsor all the buses. So all the Bengali people, they love to go, you know, they love it, it's free. <laughs> And then and there's a benediction that if you distribute prasadam in Shantipur, or if you help cook prasadam, or if you just take prasadam on that day, you get Krishna Prabhu. That is the blessings of Advaita Acharya. So it's a nice festival to go there and do that, distribute prasadam. So Prabhupada was thinking at one point he would make the world headquarters of this con in Shantipur. He wanted to get land, but he couldn't get land there. And so he came to Mayapur and he was fortunate to be able to get the land in Mayapur. So Shantipur, a very important place. And many pastimes took there, took place there in Shantipur. If you go to Shantipur, there's a picture there which is a copy of the original painting done, a portrait of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, sometimes we wonder, I wonder what Lord Chaitanya actually looked like. You know, because we see artists, paintings and so on, but I wonder what he actually looked like. So in the times of Maharaj Prataparudra, he commissioned an artist to do a portrait of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And a copy of that portrait is there in Shantipur. And you can see what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looked like in the artist's portrait. It's very nice. So, Lord Chaitanya would come there regularly to Shantipur. Chananda Maharaj described how he came one time to beat him. 
because the great Acharya had been preaching Yoga Vashista. He wanted to make Chaitanya Mahaprabhu angry with him, so he was preaching Yoga Vashista. A Yoga Vashista preaches the glory of liberation. The goal of life is to get moksha. Right? You should all want to get moksha. Don't worry about the bhakti, just get moksha. So Advaita Acharya was preaching like that, and Lord Chaitanya was very angry with the king of Gita. Another time, Lord Chaitanya came there to Shantipur. It was when he took sannyas. Lord Nityananda had gone there with him to. Uh, he, he took sannyas in Katwa. You go to Katwa. Katwa is north of Mayapur. You go to Katwa, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the name, the ashram of uh, Keshava Bharati Maharaj, who is there in Katwa. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas in Katwa, and the samadhi of Mahaprabhu's hair is there. It's a samadhi for his hair in Katwa at that time. And uh, after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he was in ecstasy, he wanted to go to Vrindavan. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu played a trick on him. Just as we heard, Advaita Acharya was an unusual personality, and so was Lord Nityananda. So Lord Nityananda kind of tricked Lord Chaitanya, that when they saw the Ganga, Lord Nityananda said, yes, the Yamuna. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very happy to understand him. But then Advaita Acharya came by on a boat and Lord Chaitanya was surprised. He said, hey, just a minute. What, what are you doing here in Vrindavan Advaita Acharya? And then they revealed to Lord Chaitanya that actually, you know, this is the Ganga. But anyway, this side of the Yamuna, this side of the Ganga, this is from the Yamuna. Actually, it's the Yamuna, you know. The Yamuna joins onto the Ganga, and on this side of the Ganga, this is where the Yamuna comes in. So I wasn't lying to you, I wasn't cheating you, it was actually the Yamuna. Anyway, they brought Lord Chaitanya to Shantipur. He'd just taken sannyas. And after taking sannyas, they brought him to Shantipur. And they had a festival, and they sent the bodies go back to Mayapur, bring Mother Sachi. They didn't bring Vishnu Priya. <laughs> you can't meet the wife, but you can meet the mother. The mother came, right? The mother came from Mayapur with all the devotees, and all the many devotees came, and they had a big festival in Shantipur, a lot of kirtan, and Mother Sachi was cooking for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Mother Sachi, was able to feel satisfied. Although she was broken hearted to see her son as a sannyasi, she was pacified when she was able to cook from him. And she did. And Lord Chaitanya always relished Mother Sachi's cooking. So much so that every day Lord Chaitanya will accept the offerings in the home of Mother Sachi. So when they were there in Shantipur, Advaita Acharya would do the offering and he put down three plates and they had three big banana leaves and they covered it with so many preparations and mountains of rice. You know, Bengalis, when they eat, they can eat rice, you know. Yeah. If there's no rice, oh, what? Why are we fasting? So that they, when they make an offering, you have a mountain of rice. And then also so many nice sap, sapis, vegetables, green leafy vegetables are plenty there in Bengal. And Lord Chaitanya came, he came to Advaita Charya's house and he Advaita said, I, I will cook lunch for you, I want to cook for me. Lord Chaitanya said, yeah, just give me a little, a little rice and some sap. Lord Chaitanya was very fond of sap, the vegetable, green leafy vegetable. He said, but just give me, you know, keep it simple, you know, a little rice and some sand, I'll be happy. I said, no problem, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it. So they made this big offering, three big plates, and then after the offering, then he invited Lord Chaitanya, this is your 
And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, just a minute, I'm a sannyasi, I, I can't eat like this. Advaita Acharya said, oh, please, you come to my home, please, please, you have to eat, please, oh, don't do this to me. I know who you are, I know you eat 64 offerings every day in Jagannath Puri. How you can refuse? This is just a tiny morsel of food for you. In this way, Advaita Acharya would implore Lord Chaitanya to take the good stuff which they had prepared. And as Lord Chaitanya would eat, they would put more on the plate. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya would, oh no, come on. And then every time we take some, they fill it up again. Anyway, that place, it's there in Shantipur. They've made it a uh, a special shrine where Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya and Advaita Acharya where they sat and took their prasad. It's a very special place. And of course there, there were joking words at that time also. Lord Nityananda, you know, they, they gave this huge feast and Lord Nityananda complained that, you know, I, I've been fasting for three days to come here and, and now my hunger is not being satisfied. This, this, this is not even a morsel of foodstuff for me. And I pray to Acharya would protest, please, I'm, I'm just a poor Brahmana, please just accept what I offer to you. In this way, there was always joking words between Lord Nityananda and Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya would say, we do not know your identity. Lord Nityananda is Abhadurut, right? You, you, you don't know, is he a sannyasi, is he a Brahmacharya, is he where is he from? <laughs> we don't know your identity. Advaita Acharya was the head of the Brahmana community. All of the Brahmanas, they were, they, he was the head of all of them. They all listened to him. Now he was a very important person in the society. And today, of course, you know, with, with the Brahmanas, it's the scientists who are in the position of the Brahmanas. The scientists and the, and the, the what, the technologists. Everyone's controlled by technology today. But in the times of Mahaprabhu, there were still some remnants of any culture. And Advaita Acharya was Brahmana, and he was the head of the Brahmanas. So he was very respected. And he had Haridas Thakur coming there also. And Haridas Thakur was very intimately associated. In Shantipur today even they have a place there for Haridas Thakur. And they describe him as being the disciple of Advaita Acharya. But actually, Haridas Thakur never ever took initiation from anyone. But he was always there, but he was there a lot with Advaita Acharya. So Advaita Acharya uh, had a, an, another interesting pastime, which I want you to tell, because it, it's a nice one. It tells how Advaita Acharya was also preaching in Shantipur and at one point Lord Chaitanya's older brother Vishwarup was coming there. He would go every day because the home, the home is nearby. And Vishwarup would go and sit and listen to Advaita Acharya preaching. So at one point at, at, at Mother Sachi and Jagannath Mishra decided it's time to get our eldest son married. They wanted to arrange the marriage for Vishwarup. So when Vishwarup understood that his parents were going to arrange his marriage, then he disappeared. He left home. And eventually they got the news that he had taken sannyas. And taking, taking sannyas means he's not going to be coming home again. So they were quite disappointed. It was heartbreaking. Oh, our poor son is gone off. He's taking sannyas. 
So, so after some time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed pastimes where he was giving mercy to all the devotees. He was sitting on the, the throne, the altar of Lord Vishnu, and he would call different devotees and he would give them mercy, give blessings. So then the devotees said, what about Mother Sachi? You should give blessings for Mother Sachi. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, I will never give blessings for Mother Sachi. The devotees were, what? Your own mother? You, the Divine Mother, you're not going to give any blessings to her? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, she is an offender of devotees. I cannot give any blessings to someone who is committing Vaishnava Apara. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when, when he wanted to stress to all of his devotees the importance of not committing any offense against anyone. And he, he felt that his mother had been offensive to Advaita Acharya. Not physically, not verbally, but mentally. That within her mind she was thinking, my son Vishwarup went to the home of Advaita Acharya every day. And when I was going to get him married, he left home. It must have been the influence of Advaita Acharya. He was preaching from the Shastra. He's preaching. What is the use of this material world? It is all temporary. We're all going to die one day, sooner or later. What is the point of going into family life? The family life, it is just the under coupon, it's a blind well. So Mother Sachi was thinking that Advaita Acharya has certainly influenced the thinking of the thinking of my son. And therefore, he's gone away from home and taken sannyas. And Lord Chaitanya wanted to correct this. And he told the devotees, Mother Sachi is the offender of devotees. I will not give her blessings. So the devotees all went to Mother Sachi and they brought her and they brought Advaita Acharya and Advaita Acharya said, no, 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 Mother Sachi, she could never offend me. How is it? She's the Divine Mother. She's the Mother of our Lord Mahaprabhu. How could she ever commit an offense against me? I cannot know that they were bringing Advaita Acharya. By force they were bringing him. He did not want to. But Mother Sachi came and by force. Advaita Acharya became so overwhelmed in the thought that at one point he fainted. And when he fainted, they told Mother Sachi, quick, now go, touch his feet, take the dust from his feet and get the witness for your offense. So in this way, Mother Sachi was relieved for committing any offense against Advaita Acharya. And Mahaprabhu was satisfied that Mother Sachi has a point for her little tinge of offense which she may have committed. So like this, Advaita Acharya performed many wonderful past things. Are we on time? Yeah, we four minutes. Huh? Another four minutes. Four minutes. Depends when they open the curtain, really. <laughs> <laughs> I are you on time? Is it on standard? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Is it open for a minute? Or? I'm far at the end. Now we'll be asking. They're opening for a minute. We'll start now or we'll start for a minute? Two more minutes. If you want to speak, you can speak another five minutes. Another five minutes. Yeah. No, just one thing I, I just want to say was about the Advaita Acharya's sons. Uh, we heard how he had six sons. I don't know if they were daughters or not. I only saw that sons, there were six sons, three were devotees and three were not devotees. So we will wonder how is it possible Advaita Acharya 
is the incarnation of God, is the Bhakta uh, Acharya is preaching devotion. How is it possible three of his sons were not devotees? Well, one possible explanation which I heard was that because the great Acharya was preaching Yoga Vashishta, at one point he took up the preaching of the Yoga Vashishta, which stresses the importance of liberation. When he wanted to anger Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was preaching this Yoga Vashishta, which emphasizes that liberation is the goal. And that's, that's not our philosophy, that's impersonal or Mayavadi philosophy. So Advaita Acharya at one point was preaching that. So that some of the sons, they accepted that. They thought this is actually the right, that this is the way. So that's one explanation. Another explanation is, of course, they're Brahmanas by birth, and they're just, we say Jati Brahmins, Brahmana by birth, not by guna and karma, but by birth. And they didn't embrace the Vaishnava philosophy, which Advaita Acharya was propagating, which was the, the, the actual message of Advaita Acharya, the teachings of Mahaprabhu, Vaishnava philosophy, and Brahmana is not by birth, but by Guna and Karma. So of the six sons, Advaita Achyutananda was the most famous, the, the very wonderful son. Even when he was a little child, just a few years old, he heard that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas initiation. And he did not like it, and he told everyone. He was only a little boy, only a few years old, and he was saying, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord. How can anyone be his spiritual master? So all the devotees, when they heard the Chutananda speak like this, they were very pleased with that oh, What a nice child. He understood fully the position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was expressing his surprise. How anyone can become the guru of the Supreme Lord? He is the guru of everyone. So Chutananda was very prominent also at the Rathiyatras, in the Kirtan, he would be one of the main dancers. Another one of the sons of Advaita Acharya was Gopal. And at one point, when they were cleaning the Gundicha temple, there's a pastime how Lord Chaitanya ordered Gopal to dance. Gopal, dance! So Gopal began dancing. But he danced, and suddenly he fainted. He just fell down unconscious. And all the devotees, they naturally rushed, they came from, and they were chanting mantras. And they could not even perceive any consciousness. They thought he departed from the body. And they were all chanting prayers to Lord Nusrinidev and everything. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally came and put his hand on his chest and said, Gopal, get up and dance. And Gopal got up and began to dance. And everyone cheered. So this was some of the pastimes of the the sons of Advaita Acharya. Three were caste. They were smarter Brahmins. They did not embrace the Vaishnava philosophy. But three, they, they were loyal to the tree. The other three sons here are described as Asara. Asara meaning useless. Because they gave up the Vaishnava philosophy. They did not follow their father. And unfortunate souls. Advaita Acharya Prabhu Ke. Prabhupada Ke. Go back to Vrinda Ke. Hare Krishna. We have the temple and the council of the Latin. The Sulevas Pati Chaitanya Swami. The Sulevas Nanda Goswami. The Sulevas. Bhakti Vipul Maharaj, Vishnu Maharaj, for the wonderful discourse and appearance here in the world. I beg to tell you.
Vivo. Sila Prabhu Bhari, please. Now we're going to have the Arthi. Sila Prabhu 